I think at the beginning, you said the beginning of your story and your life, you said that you, for a long time, you had the dream, uh, so to speak, to become famous. But it yeah. seems like at some point you moved away from it because you said you didn't pursue money. It also doesn't seem to me as you were pursuing being famous after a while because like you were working as kind of the person in the background, like client management is more you being kind of the background person. You have a great life and you enjoy what you do, but it's not really a path to becoming famous. So I'm curious, like what made you, if it happened, like what made you change your mind to, you know, from becoming, I want to become famous to, Hey, I just love this. I'm getting paid. It's not much. And I just want to pursue this, no matter if I'm going to become famous or not, if I'm going to be rich, I just like this. It, it's interesting because I think what I, I'd never, you know, it's interesting the way you asked the question because I've never thought of this before. I've never been asked that question before. I've never even thought of that before. But now that you've asked the question, the answer came to my mind immediately. I think that the idea of being famous is more about being recognized. Not recognized on the street, but recognized for what you're doing. And I think that whatever feeling I had when I was younger about wanting to be famous was because I felt like I was invisible to the world. Mm. And as I got out into the world and I started making connections with people and working with other human beings and being outside of my little tiny circle, I started realizing that I am being recognized. I'm being recognized for the work that I'm, being, that I'm doing. I'm being recognized for being pretty good at what I do. And there's a great deal of satisfaction in that. I know that, you know, when I, um, when I'm on a red carpet with musicians, a lot of the musicians know who I am and all of the media know who I am. It's like, that's recognition. I'm like, I don't need them to take my picture. I don't need to be on camera. As a matter of fact, the times that I am on camera, I'm really, I look terribly uncomfortable. Like I'm trying to, look, I'm trying to look, <laughs> I'm trying to look away and not actually be on camera. You know, I, you know, for, for, you know, to be fortunate enough to be, you know, to have people. I'm not, okay. So I told you that one of my favorite bands growing up was Kiss. Mm -hmm. And though, um, though Bill O'Coin didn't work with Kiss anymore, the members of Kiss would come up to the office to socialize every once in a while, which was really cool for me. The week before I left New York to come back to Toronto, I was walking up Madison Avenue. At 50, our offices were at 53rd and 5th Avenue. And one block over from there is Madison Avenue. So I was walking up Madison to go along 53rd and it was raining. And I heard from across the street, someone yell, Steve, hey, Steve, Steve. And I looked across the street and there's Ace Frehley waving at me. And I remember my heart exploding going, Ace Frehley knows who I am. This is going to be just about the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> you know, and that, so I think that, you know, I realized that, you know, that kind of satisfaction is all there, you know, that it was all I really needed. I didn't need to be on the cover of People magazine. I didn't need to be on every television show in the world. I just needed to feel like people recognized me and what I was doing, regardless of what it was I was doing. 